ever get that creepy feeling like someone's peeking at your online shopping? <laughs> Like, how they know I needed another house plant? Well, it's not just you. Data privacy, it's kind of like that house plant, easy to neglect until things get uh, messy. So today, we're diving deep into those data privacy blind spots. And trust me, you don't want to be caught snoozing on this. Luckily, we've got the data diva herself, Debbie Reynolds, as our guide. She's like the Sherlock Holmes of data privacy, making this stuff actually interesting. And believe me, you need to know this stuff. Absolutely. We're talking about those hidden data risks that even techies sometimes miss. Think of us as your like your data privacy cheat sheet. We're breaking down Debbie's expert advice into, you know, plain English. Hmm. What's the dangers? Why should you care? And what can you actually do about it? First up, we're tackling something that sounds kind of boring, but it's a huge GE deal. Unstructured data. Okay, picture this. You've got your perfectly organized file cabinet. Right, everything labeled, color-coded, maybe even alphabetized. Beautiful. Right. Now picture that chaotic kitchen drawer we all have. You know, the one with the rubber bands, the takeout menus, that random battery. Oh, yeah. Exactly. That cabinet, that's your structured data, all neat and tidy in its databases. But that drawer, that's unstructured data. And get this, it's way more common than you think. It's true. And it's a big one. That 2023 IDC report, the one Reynolds mentions, it found that up to 90% yeah, 90% of the data organizations are wrestling with it's this messy, unstructured kind. And that's where things get, well, kind of scary for data privacy. Yeah, it's like trying to find a lost earring in like a black hole, right. except the black hole is made of old email spreadsheets, voicemails. You name it. It's a mess. Total mess. And Reynolds, she nails it, you know. She points out that this unstructured data, it's a nightmare to categorize, analyze, keep secure. And trying to follow all those data privacy rules with that mess, forget about it. And it's not just about keeping things organized, right? Yeah. Think about it. Someone wants their data deleted. It's their right to be forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. But you've got like a gazillion gigabytes of unsorted files. How can you possibly be sure you've scrubbed every trace of their info? Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, that's giving me anxiety just thinking about it. Yeah. So... How do we slay this like this unstructured data dragon? Thankfully, Reynolds, she's got her back. She's got a plan. Sure. Step one, it's all about mapping the terrain. We're talking full on digital cartography, right? Got to map out where all your data lives. Every file, every server, every cloud you're using. You got to know what you've got before you can protect it. Exactly. And it's not just about where it is, but what it is, right? Yeah. That's where document classification comes in. Think of it like finally labeling all those random containers in your pantry. Oh, I like that. Right. You're not necessarily tossing anything out, although decluttering is never a bad idea. But at least now you know where the spices are, you know, so they don't end up like mixed in with your grandma's secret cookie recipe. That's a good one. Right. Organization is key. But Reynolds, she doesn't stop there. She's got more tricks up her sleeve. She's all about bringing in the big guns, privacy-enhancing technologies. These are like the super sleuths of the data world, right? They can analyze all that unstructured data, categorize it, you know, make sense of the chaos. And, of course, you got to have those good old-fashioned access controls in place. You know, make sure only the right people have the keys to the data kingdom. Absolutely. Got to have those walls up. Exactly. All right. So we've tackled that digital junk drawer. Okay, so we've sorted through that digital junk tour. Now let's talk about another data privacy trap that's, like, way too easy to fall into. It's data duplication. Ah, yes. I'm sure you've been there, right? <laughs> you save, like, a million versions of the same file, just with tiny little name changes. Oh, yeah. Final, 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 really final, final for real this time. <laughs> it's exactly. <laughs> Happens to the best of us, right? <laughs> but here's the thing. Reynolds, she calls this the silent multiplier. And it's like the perfect way to describe it. Because these data duplicates, they just multiply in the background like digital rabbits. You really do. One minute you've got one file, the next thing you know, it's everywhere. And every single copy, it's a potential weak spot. Exactly. It's like you wouldn't leave copies of your house keys scattered around town. Or... Right. And don't even get me started on the compliance headache this creates. Oh, tell me about it. Someone wants their data deleted. It's their right, you know, right to be forgotten, all that. But if you've got these like data fragments scattered to the wind. Different departments, devices, who even knows where those backups ended up? Yeah. You can't possibly guarantee you found every last bit of their info. It's like, what's that game? Whack-a-mole. Except you've got a thousand moles popping up everywhere. A thousand is putting it mildly, yeah. probably. And it's not just a security nightmare. Reynolds points out it gets expensive too, right? Mm -hmm. Think wasted storage space. 
potential for errors with different versions flowing around. Chaos. Yeah. It's just data chaos. Total chaos. So how do we stop this data from like cloning itself out of control? Reynolds, she's got a plan. Always a plan, this woman. I like her style. Right. First up, we're setting some ground rules. We're talking clear, no-nonsense data governance policies. This is like the rule book for how data gets treated in your organization. You got to have rules. Where it gets stored, who can access it, when it's okay, or absolutely not okay to make copies. Right. Lay down the law. But here's the thing. Rules don't mean much if nobody knows them, right? Mm -hmm. That's where employee training comes in. It's got to be drilled in. Absolutely. You can have the fanciest security system in the world, but human error, it's still a thing. Biggest vulnerability there is. So train your team, make it everyone's responsibility. Okay, but Reynolds doesn't stop there. She's got more for us. She also recommends data deduplication strategies. We're fighting fire with fire, people. Or, well, fighting duplicates with. Mm. Deduplication. You get what I mean? I do. I do. Thankfully, you know, it's not the Stone Age. We've got tech to help us out here. Technology to the rescue. There are tools out there that can analyze your data, sniff out those duplicates. It's like a robotic cleaning crew for your servers. Instead, instead of dust bunnies, they're hunting down those pesky duplicate files. Love it. So we've tackled those messy data piles and those duplicate files. What's next? All right. Ready for our final data privacy blind spot? This one's all about those digital relics we tend to forget about. Legacy data. Ah, the skeletons in the data closet. Okay, you know how some people, they just can't throw anything away. Like every old phone magazine, that sweater they wore in high school. Oh yeah, I know those people. Right. Well, organizations, they can be just guilty of digital hoarding. They let old data pile up in their systems like it's going out of style. It happens. Out of sight, out of mind, Exactly. Right? But here's the thing, Reynolds. She's like, wake up, people. That legacy data, it's not just taking up space. It's often sitting on these outdated systems with, like, Stone Age security. Talk about a hacker's dream come true. Right. And it gets worse. Reynolds, she talks about this company that got slapped with a massive fine because they couldn't delete customer data. You know, those right-to-be-forgotten requests. Yeah, those are serious. So they get this request, right, and they're like, uh-oh, where's that data anyway? Turns out... They had it stashed away on these ancient backup tapes. Who even uses tapes anymore? I mean, talk about a blast from the past and not the good kind. Right. It's a cautionary tale for sure. Reynolds makes it clear this legacy data, it's not just a cybersecurity issue. It's a legal landmine just waiting to go off. Especially with data privacy regulations changing all the time. Exactly. So how do we deal with this digital dust bunny infestation? Reynolds, she's got us covered. First things first, we got to do some serious digital decluttering. We're talking a full-on data audit, uncover all those forgotten data graveyards. Like digital archaeologists. Right. You never know what you'll dig up. But once you've identified all that stuff, you got to make some tough choices. Anything you don't absolutely need to keep. Reynolds, she's like, hit that delete button. Out with the old. But here's the thing, deleting data these days, it's not as simple as it used to be. Nope. We're not just dragging files to the recycle bin anymore. Exactly. We got to go full Mission Impossible on this data. We're talking secure deletion, make sure it's gone for good. Gone, baby, gone. And for the stuff you do need to keep, time to beef up the security on those legacy systems. It's like if you're going to keep your antique furniture, at least make sure it's got, you know, a good security system to protect it. Love that analogy. But Reynolds doesn't stop there. She's all about those long-term solutions. We're talking data retention policies. Mm -hmm. Decide how long you're keeping different types of data. Put a system in place to get rid of it securely when the time comes. Exactly. This is not a one and done kind of deal. Managing this legacy data, it's an ongoing process. Technology changes, regulations change. You got to be ready to adapt. That's like, what's that saying? Eternal vigilance is the price of data privacy. Something like that. Something like that. But seriously, you hit the nail on the head. You got to stay on top of it. Well, that's the beauty of Debbie Reynolds' work, right? She takes this stuff that can feel totally overwhelming and makes it feel doable. I agree. She breaks it down into steps, and she always brings it back to you why you should care about this stuff. Exactly. And that's what we've tried to do today, too. We've given you a crash course on those data privacy blind spots, why they matter, and what you can actually do about it. Because knowledge is power, right? Absolutely. The more you know about data privacy, the better equipped you are to protect yourself and your information. So if you're feeling a little inspired to up your data privacy game after today's deep dive, head over to our website. We've got tons of resources, links to Debbie Reynolds' work, all that good stuff.
And hey, if you've got any data privacy tips or tricks that work for you, share them with us. We're all in this together, right? Absolutely. Data privacy is a team sport. Until next time, stay safe, stay informed, and keep those data blind spots in check.